Hey there viewers, welcome back to another episode of Ray of All Trades. Next on the bench is a 22 ton log splitter made by Husky. Just needs a, a little bit of TLC. A buddy of mine uses it regularly, burns about uh, eight cords a year, and he's had this thing several years. Does really well with it. He just put this uh, wedge on here recently. Said it's doing fantastic. Who else on the channel really enjoys being able to repair friends equipment, have the knowledge to repair friends equipment and then gets to use it free of charge after you clean it up and whatnot. Uh, one of my favorite parts of the job. I actually offered to do the maintenance on it and in exchange for letting me use it for a uh, cleaning up my, my wood pile. Let's get this thing cleaned up and then do some, uh, do some maintenance to it and get it ready for him so he can continue using it and so that it's ready for the uh, for his next outing. So sometimes I will power wash a piece of equipment and get it cleaned up and try to fix the paint and whatnot. And other times I'll just wipe it down with a dry soft cloth. Difference is when there is a coat of petroleum base, you know, oil of some sort all over everything and the powder coat is in fairly good condition, I'd prefer to wipe it off so that the power washer is not knocking off the pieces of powder coating and then introducing rust and making it weather and you know get old and rust early on something like this i'd prefer to basically just use a dry dry cloth get all the dirt and everything out of there because if i use a power washer i'm going to introduce water and pressure and everything else on this piece of equipment because it sits underneath a a cover but still has still exposed to elements i I'd prefer to use the original powder coating that's on the machine that's the reason why sometimes i'll power wash one and sometimes i will uh, just wipe it down with a rag on this machine we are going to do just a regular service. Uh, the machine runs fantastic, starts on the first pull. Um, the hydraulics sound good, everything else. I think he said that uh, he had changed out the hydraulic fluid but didn't have a filter at the time. So the hydraulic fluid is fairly new, uh, but the filter wasn't. We're gonna see if we can change out the, the filter without losing too much of his fluid. The air filters, I buy them in bulk. Um, the plug that's on there, I'm noticing that it's got a 13 16 base and the one that uh, says it fits this is a 5 8 base and so we're just going to verify that it's got the same gap and that there's no surprises. And then the Wix filter for the hydraulic is a 5 1 5 5 3. We'll just check everything along the way, just make sure that the primer bulb is not, you know, doesn't need to replace, things like that. Anyway, let's get the air filter, spark plug oil filter change and let's uh, drain we're going to drain the oil out of this and we're going to fill it back up okay to drain the oil on the motor you have to come well on this motor anyway um, you have to come underneath it and you see that plug back there in the back see this plug right there if it's a 3 8 extension loosen that up with a regular 
extension and uh, ratchet, and then it's going to drain oil straight down. Then we're going to clean it up and put it back together. So I ended up having to use a longer ratchet um, coming through this the back side up here because the extension didn't give me enough leverage and this thing is on there really tight. So let's see if we can get it to come loose with this, this ratchet. And now that she's loose, I can use the ratchet to, or the extension to get to there. Make sure you have a drain pan underneath it. Oh, it's looking a little bit dark. Put you guys back up in the cradle so I can use my hands. We'll let this finish draining. Let's get the spark plug pulled. While that's still draining. Okay, I'm showing an RJ19LM plug. That was running just about right, maybe a little bit on the lean side. And it appears to be gapped to about 30 thousandths. Don't like the way this plug's matching up to the original. This has an extremely shallow set of threads. That plug is not right. Even though it was matched up to that motor, that plug's not right. So let me go find an RJ19LM or uh, equivalent, and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so I've got the wrong spark plug. We're going to continue on with the rest of the service, and then I'll run out and buy the uh, right spark plug, and we'll finish the video up with that. Clean off your area for the plug. Okay, whenever I'm not immediately moving to filling the oil, I always pull the dipstick out and leave it out somewhere near the starter so that I have to bump into it to try to pull start this thing. Obviously to keep me from running it with no oil. Get the air filter pulled. Yeah, she's, she's pretty well spent. Um, so I'm going to use a rag and wipe this area off so no debris ends up inside the carburetor. And then this uh, the cover I can bring outside and use an air compressor and blow it off because it's not going to introduce anything into this uh, carburetor. filter make sure it fits plug it back in there's some debris up in here um, now that the carburetor's covered let me plug the uh, spark plug hole real quick Move the oil out the way. We're going to blow some of that debris out of there because I can't really get that with a rag. Okay. All right, our next step, we're going to try and change this filter. We'll write the date on it when we're done because there's no hour meter on this thing. 
I'm anticipating when I pull the filter off that gravity is going to be pushing the fluid up and out of here. We will lose some fluid, obviously, um, but we'll be, try to be quick about changing it out. I'm okay with having to add fresh fluid to it. I understand what he's saying. He just literally had just changed it but didn't have a filter. So we'll have the filter ready to rock as soon as that other filter comes off of there. Don't know how much we're going to lose. And I don't see any good way of like tilting it so that the filter is the highest point, you know, without affecting the motor or things like that. I mean, the oil's out of it right now. I guess we could set this whole thing up on its ass, but like I said, again, I don't really care about losing some fluid. We're just going to refill what we lose anyway. What'd we lose? A tenth of a quart, maybe? Something like that. While that's draining, I'm gonna look up what the oil spec is for the Brig 6.5. Looks like 16 ounces of 10W30. So this one's getting a drink of this John Deere stuff. I have to turn around and see if it turns green when it's sitting in the shed. Let's verify capacity. Spot on. Zero, one, 23. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this, uh, recycle this oil, grab a spark plug and I'll meet you guys back here as soon as, uh, as soon as we're ready to put it back together. All right, y'all, made it out to the store and back. The uh, RJ19LM is the plug that I needed and my, I think it was AutoZone. Not a sponsor. They usually have pretty decent prices on these things. It was two dollars and something for this. Uh, gap for thirty thousandths, by the way. So just snug enough to squish that that uh, washer that's at the bottom of the plug. That's a good solid connection. If it didn't, you could squeeze it together. Possibly put some uh, dielectric grease on there. That would help it. 30 pounds of pressure on the tires. Let's go ahead and get those full. Let's check the hydraulic level. You guys ever seen the uh, skit or uh, the meme or picture, whatever you want to call it, of the mechanic that's got all of his wrenches lined up on the wall? And it's, you know, all the way from six millimeter all up to like 24 millimeter. And all it is is a whole bunch of whole bunch of uh, adjustable wrenches all set at different sizes, and it would say like 10 millimeter. Anyway, I always got a kick out of that one. Trying to get the threads off here. There's there's dirt. The further out I unscrew that, the more dirt shows up. Let's try to be gentle about taking that out. So somewhere in the middle is what we want. So right at the fill line. So I'm going to get some uh, 10W30 hydraulic oil, fill it back up. Once that's full, we're going to test several functions. Number one, we're going to pull the pan up here, tilt this up, make sure that that moves up and down without any kind of issue. We're going to make sure that the hydraulic ram goes all the way down to, it won't hit the bottom, but it'll be pretty close. Make sure that there's nothing, there's nothing sticking on the down push. When you let go at any point in time throughout the travel, you want that cylinder to completely stop. And then when you put it to the up position, it should stay the up position. When it fully retracts, it should push this back to the neutral position after a slight uh, engine dip. So we're gonna make sure that all those work. And finally, um, we're gonna make sure that the shutoff switch kills the motor like it's supposed to. Let me get some hydraulic oil. So hit all the lube points, all the pivot points, the, even the latch up front. I went around back and grabbed a 
really ugly piece of wood that I've been using to cut the uh, test chainsaws with. The only reason why I had to push on that is because my bad boy buggy is lifting up on the front. If you haven't seen those series, I, that's something I'm really proud of lately. Let's give it a few primers. One, two, three, four. Let's move it to uh, run, grab it. Feels like it might have a choke position all the way at the front. Because I don't see a different choke. So I feel like a little click up here at the very, very end. I think that might be choke. Let's give it a try. You see the log had all kinds of cuts in it. So the very first chip, I, or excuse me, split I was doing, all the pieces were crumbling underneath it. Didn't even think about it. Let me go ahead and put this thing back. Uh, looks like it's working just like it's supposed to. Safety features, easy start. Uh, surged a little bit so it got warm. If that surging, if that surging continued, we would be looking at pilot jet on the uh, carburetor. That's it for the maintenance on the uh, Husky 22 ton log splitter. You guys got something out of the video, really appreciate a thumbs up, subscribe, helps the channel tremendously. Catch you guys on the next one.